My story began when I was 16. I've always wanted to travel, but never knew why. Maybe because I wasn't satisfied with the environment, or maybe not happy with our education system. Or maybe I felt for a second that I could do more outside my country. So finally, in August 2008, I was lucky enough to be one of the 30 Yemeni students to go to the country that most of the Yemenis dream about, the United States. So after a long trip, I found myself in a state that I never heard of before, Wisconsin and a family that never seen before. But everything was new and different for me, and strangers were everywhere, and I had no other option except to adapt. So throughout the experiences I had, I do remember one day going to the high school as a normal high school kid. Everyone in my history class knew the smiley kid Maad, but never cared where he came from. Or what does he believe in? So the teacher, for the first time, he asked to know more about Yemen. And I was really excited. So he asked to Google Yemen. And as soon as he Googled, the first thing that shows up was this. <laughs> so as a 16 years old, with not perfect English, I had to, I had to stand up and talk on behalf of, of my country. I love those people that were not that bad. So I had a friend of mine who was asking me, you cannot be a terrorist, Mahat. I didn't know if that was a question that I should answer, or maybe that was an answer that I should explain more. I didn't know if that was her fault or my fault, or maybe it's media's fault, or maybe it's government's fault or maybe it's everyone's fault. So I asked her back, what do you know about Yemen and Islam? She said, I just know you, Maad. I know nothing. So at that moment, I just realized, it's not about math and science I, get, I can get there. It's all about the understanding of other cultures around us. So I decided to take those people on a journey to my Yemen through my Yemeni presentations. But before doing that presentation, I actually asked some people what they want to know about Yemen and Islam. So I had those friends who came to me and who were like, I want to know about the food over there. Others were like, I want to know about the clothes. I had, I had a friend of mine who came whispering, saying that I just want to know how women with hijab take shower. <laughs> so as you think it's silly, I didn't well, yeah, I thought a little bit silly, but I had to respect his question because at least he had the courage to ask, right? If I was him, I wouldn't ask actually that question. So, so uh, with the help of my host family, I could deliver that presentation to hundreds of people in my community and outside, different ages, different schools, and different houses as well. So they would call me saying, Mark, would you like to come over to do your presentation? And my answer has been always yes. So uh, with the respect of both cultures, uh, my Yemeni presentation actually got rewarded. So that was me doing the presentation to kids. And that was me doing the presentation in church. And after all, my Yemeni presentation got rewarded to San Francisco and won the first place among hundreds of applicants. So regardless to all those kind of questions, whether we go to school by camels, have computers, or women with hijab have cancer, regardless all of these questions, I really liked something about some American students. They would ask about anything and everything that would affect their lives, their future, and their society. So I was really, I was really amazed how they would ask. And we're still fighting for something that they have. It's educational democracy. I'm not talking about political democracy that everyone knows. I'm talking about education democracy, the freedom of speech in the classrooms, the students' right to express their, their 
thoughts, share their ideas with teachers, discussions, debates, sports. That's what we need in our school, actually. So, uh, so most of us wake up early in the morning, get dressed up, have allowance if it's possible, to go to the place that was supposed to be for learning, school. Seemed and still like an everyday habit for me that I cannot change. But you know, we end up like this. Obviously, right? So, uh, we end up like this. So, it's not the matter of we need access to school. The problem is that we do have all things to study, but not to learn. And it's a huge difference. We study what people think it's important, but we learn what we think it's important to us. So that's a difference. Uh, so I honestly sometimes think to drop school because I think, you know, like, like it's not going to help me to reach what I want for myself, my future, and my society. But then I just realized, you know, like, like imagine this. Like I go knocking the door, mom, dad, I want to drop school. I don't think that would be a good reaction for them. So I came up with this philosophy that the world is my school. And the people I meet every single day are my teachers. And the obstacles and the challenges that I have through my life are my lessons. So walking to school in that freezing cold of Wisconsin seemed like a nightmare for me at first. But then I never thought for a second that I would learn from walking to school more than what people usually learn in the school itself. Seeing different people working different jobs. Seeing those women walking their dogs in the, worst, in, like, in the worst weather condition you could ever imagine. Other women walking their children to school. And you know what? Everyone has a smile on their face. That little smile had a huge impact in my life. I do remember one of my high school teachers, he used to kick me out of the class whenever he sees me smiling. Has a smile become a problem in our education system? Well, if so, I don't know what to expect next. So uh, another issue to mention, but before, uh, raise your hand if you studied or still studying something that is not related to your interest. If you studied or still studying? Okay, so we have a lot of them. Okay, so uh, my mom wanted, to be in, wanted me to be in engineering, but uh, my aunts thought I would be a perfect pilot because I would love to travel a lot. And my grandma, Allah Rahman, wished I was a doctor. But uh, the question is, what do I really want for myself? It's not about how your family wants you to be. It's what do I want for myself? So whenever you think that you cannot make it, you cannot just let it go and study the thing that you want. Just think of those people. One of them is Albert Einstein. You know, this guy, he couldn't speak until he was four. You know like how the moms and dads like nowadays they brag about their children? Like whenever they talk at the age of one, months even. But this guy, he didn't talk until he was four. So, and he went to school that it, all the school was interested in sports, but he was not. And he did really well on the, shop, on the subjects that he liked, but he did really bad on the subjects that he did not like. But he had something that made him Albert Einstein, and it was a creative thinking. It was a creative thinking. And think of those other people who dropped school but made it big. I'm not saying that you should drop school, or like a drop school and stay at home, you know? No, like I'm saying, you know, if you think that a school will not let you to reach what you want and to be successful, just try to do something else, but not stay at home. So sorry, education doesn't belong to educators anymore. Anyone can educate. And it doesn't even belong to a place anymore. 
as I said, the world was my school. And that's where I learned from other people. So professor, teacher, educator. I don't want to go to your lecture every single day. Hearing your lecture without you hearing my comments. As I learn from you, yes, you can learn from me. I don't want to go to my Islamic studies class and feel ashamed of asking about my religion. Because you know what? No one asks about religion. I don't want to go to my biology class and feel shy about asking about my sexuality. Because everyone will think I'm making jokes and start laughing. I don't want to feel afraid of asking about some political problems because I do care. And I might be something in the future, but the teacher would be like, shh, they will hear you. So, and whenever you see me thinking or dreaming in the class, don't ever stop me. Because I might be thinking of solving some problems that a teacher cannot solve. Or I might be inventing something in my head, who knows? So governments, institutions, professors, make classroom more fun. I don't want my nine years old brother to come home every single day crying, saying that school is boring. So tell me, don't tell me what to do in the school and how. Tell me why do I want to go to school. So, I will leave you with this quote that I will never forget. I was attending one of the conferences in Qatar, and Joe Prom was saying that you can survive 30 days without food, and you can survive three days without water, and you can survive eight seconds without air. But you know what? You cannot survive one second without hope. And hope for me is the dreams we have for this country. Thank you.